Mind to Market Gemology is a very fascinating study. It encompasses the entire value chain of how a gemstone comes out of the ground until it reaches the customer. In 2014, we were very privileged to visit the Belmont Mine as they had just pulled out a very significant large size piece of rough and we're in the process of figuring out the best way to cut it, how to cut it, and then we were there for the entire cutting process. We were also able after that point to track the stone all the way after cutting to the market until it went to the final consumer. Our mine to market emerald was mined out of Belmont's underground mine, not from one of their open pit operations. And with the underground mining, you have different galleries in this ramp style mining that are being worked that Belmont is calling panels. So these panels are being mined and the material is loaded up in a front loader, which is then driven to a staging area so that they can load it into the trucks, which will then be driven out. So no one in the underground mine actually saw this quite important emerald as it was being mined. It was simply removed from the panels, the mining areas, put into the front loader, loaded up into the truck, and no one actually during the mining process saw this quite amazing stone. So our mine to market emerald went through the Belmont Mine sophisticated ore processing system and into their highly technologically advanced optical sorter where CCD cameras would have been the first ones to spot it and then use a blast of jet air to put it on a conveyor belt for further examination. After the optical sorter identified the emerald was present, it then goes into a locked box which is examined at the processing plant. Marcello empties the lock boxes and goes through the different pieces of rough looking for the emerald that is still attached to the schist and sees what type of material it is. If it's going to be a facet grade or cabochon or bead grade. If there's something to get excited about. The moment he found that mine the market stone there was something that was extremely exciting they knew right away they had quite an impressive piece of emerald that was going to yield a high quality stone or multiple stones. Each piece like he's doing now, he'll go through. The sawing stage was a critical stage. There was a lot of discussion and talk between Marcello and between his master cutter on where to make the first saw, how to cut this stone or saw it. They knew they would get multiple stones out of this piece of rough. But the first saw is always the critical deciding factor. Marcelo said it's such an exhilarating moment because some of it is luck and like gambling, but part of it also is skill and applying your knowledge. They wound up getting 39 sawn pieces out of this piece of rough. The largest one being about 40.68 carats. That is going to be our mine to market stone. And they're hoping once this stone is cut, they'll get about a 50% weight retention. Preforming stage for our mine to market stone is really almost as critical a stage as the sawing and requires a great deal of skill and talent also. You have to look at the stone and decide how now to set the preform, to set the basic shape and outline and dimensions and angles of the stone to get the most weight retention from the piece of rough, to get the best color face up and to hide any possible visible inclusions as much as possible. They expect now to get about a 19 karat cut stone final out of this preform. Marcelo now closely examines the preform and consults with his expert cutter on how exactly they're going to finish cutting this stone for the best results. Next, it was time to attach the stone to the dock. 
Again, the shellac type substance is heated up so that the emerald could be placed in it. And then when it cools, it'll make a secure setting for fastening. And again, the emerald is heated up just slightly, especially in the case of a very, very valuable emerald. Now that it's all heat up, they attach it. And once they get it attached, they're going to spend some time making sure that it's not just secure in the dock, but centered and level and positioned just right before they're going to begin the faceting process. This is very, very critical to get everything symmetrical. Once secured in the dop, the faceting process begins. Now, you'll notice that at this stage, he's working on the girdle. He wants to get all the sides exactly parallel. This isn't a calibrated stone. This is very valuable. So they're going to cut this freeform to save the most weight, but he wants to make sure it's parallel. All the sides are going to be symmetrical and he's checking it against a flat surface to make sure it is completely flat on each side. The master cutter simply places the girdle on the lap by hand to do this process to where he's leveling up. Now look as he's fastening the crown. He is not using the latest Israeli machine. He's very comfortable on an older style jam peg machine that may be not considered to be as capable of putting on precise facets, but in the hands of a master cutter will do a incredible job on this stuff. Constantly putting it on the wheel, examining it, looking at it again as he starts to apply the initial facets on the crown of this stone. This is a process that will continue on. Notice the skill, just the right amount of pressure, just the right amount of time at each application to the lab before he brings it back up to his eye for examination. It's going at a fairly quick rate, but he is definitely going to take the amount of time necessary to make sure he gets the exact cuts that he wants. As you can see, as the crown is coming along and proceeding to be cut, each facet, each angle on this step cut, emerald cut stone. Examining it with the light, seeing exactly where all the inclusions lie, where all of the facets lie, now he has given it to another cutter to continue to apply the crown facets after he has made sure he set the stage exactly where he wants it. Now the angles will be continue to be set on the other facets and the final polishes will be applied. This was really a painstaking process while we were there. Highly, highly critical at the polishing stage to make sure that as beautiful a polish would be applied to the stone, especially on the table, where it's very critical where the customers will see it. Now the pavilion is being faceted. Pavilion now very critical to set that angle. The pavilion angle makes a great difference in the beauty of the stone and how much light will be returned to the stone. The perfect angle has to be set in compromise with weight retention. They have to set the pavilion angles on these pavilion facets so that you don't have a window, you don't have any light leakage, so you get the beautiful green color returned to your eye while also saving as much weight as possible from the rough because the stone will be sold per carat and each portion of a carat can turn into money lost or money gained. This is the great compromise that experienced cutters learn how to achieve beauty and weight retention. After the stone was cut, they heat up the shellac type substance again and then cut it off of the dock. Very, very carefully, of course. I won't apply any, too much tension on it at any point. If they need be, they'll then heat it up a little bit more, loosen it up a bit, loosen up that material, 
and take that knife blade and just slowly, slowly pry it off of that dog until finally it's ready to break free and then they will have that stone ready for examination. A point they are anxiously looking forward to. You can see some of the dopping material still left on the stone. So at this point now, they're going to have to clean it and then it's ready for Marcelo to examine. This now, he's looking quite critically at it. The final cut stone at this point with 19.70 carats. Now Marcelo takes a close look at the stone before it goes on for enhancement. <laughs> 